This is part 70 of my series on my N-Gage model railway project. Previous parts cover the project from its inception through the creation of the baseboard selection and laying of track, building of scenic items, obtaining rolling stock, etc. The project is ongoing. This part deals with some Daypol siphon wagons that I picked up recently as part of a local Kijiji purchase and their process of mutation on my layout. But first things first, when we talk about a siphon railway wagon, what is that? Well, it's not in any sense a siphon in the normal sense of that word, and really it has nothing much to do with actual siphons, though I suppose an actual siphon could be used to transfer milk from one container to another. Siphon was a code used by the Great Western Railway to identify a class of wagons used for transporting milk in churns on the railway. Other companies did also transport milk in churns, but siphon was a term used specifically by the GWR, who probably did more of this kind of traffic than anyone else, as they were responsible for transporting milk from the dairy country around Devon to the thirsty moor of London. Here's an early picture of milk transport. This would be from before the time of bogey siphons, such as those modelled in this video. The earliest siphon wagons were four- and six-wheeled box cars without bogies. Milk was brought in churns by farmers to their local railway station from where it was transported by train, with the churns themselves loaded into wagons. The siphon was in effect just a large, freely ventilated box car. The conical milk churn was specifically designed to allow large quantities of milk to be transported in a relatively stable manner. This picture, taken at a small country station, gives some idea of the volumes of milk the GWR were dealing with. And this picture, taken at GWR London Paddington Terminus, shows even more starkly the volumes involved. In contrast, this picture, taken far away in Scotland, shows milk churns being loaded on another railway. The conical churn was particularly characteristic of the GWR. These Scottish churns are of a different design. And this wagon is also not technically a siphon, since that was a code name specifically by the GWR. In general, no refrigeration was used until later anyway. Um, the metal churns could help to keep the milk cool, given the right environment, and the siphon wagons were well ventilated to allow air to pass through. Nevertheless, it was important to get the milk to its destination quickly before it could spoil. Milk trains often ran at night to provide a cooler journey and to get the milk to London for morning distribution. Here are the three Daypol siphons that I picked up still in their boxes, along with some other items from the same Kijiji purchase. I was somewhat careless in buying these. I just saw three Daypol siphons and thought those would be nice to have, without examining them too closely. I was in the middle of sorting through hundreds of available wagons at the time. When I unpacked them, I realised that, though they were certainly G GWR siphon wagons, these m particular models were in Briar markings, as they would have been run by British Railways after nationalisation in 1948. I wasn't very happy about this, as my prototype is operations in the big four days of the 1930s, and I don't really run British Railways trains on my layout. The wagons looked nice and ran well. But it was odd having three siphons in BR markings between a GWR engine and a GWR brake van. Here they are, running on the layout in their original state. Um, it's so dark there, you can't really see anything. But uh, that's just the way the camera behaves in that corner. But as you can see as they go past here, they've got the British Railways markings on. No GW and uh, British Railways running numbers prefaced with W's. And, you know, they don't look ridiculous, but they're not really like a proper Great Western train, so I wasn't... Uh, entirely happy with them. I wasn't sure initially whether I was going to go and try and do anything with them or not, but I decided eventually that it was worth it and that I was going to uh, see if I could change them to be more in proper Great Western markings rather than uh, British Railways like this. go 
when I last run as a British Railways wagon. So I decided to bite the bullet and try to change them to GWR markings, but I also co cut corners somewhat. Rather than ordering specific GWR decals and waiting for them to come, since I'm in Canada and I would have had to have ordered them from the UK, instead I just used some microscale railway gothic lettering decals in white, which I had on hand. I removed the W's prefixing the running numbers, since those are very specific to BR, but left the other small markings alone, as they seem pretty much the same as those used by the Great Western. I put the G and W wool decals on both sides of each wagon, placed as I had seen them in photos of real siphon wagons. I removed the W's before the running numbers just by scratching with a knife and then polishing with a burnisher. And I put the wagons back on the layout in this form. I felt that this was something of an improvement and looked more like a proper GWR train. And indeed, I was ready to make this video with the wagons in this state, but as I looked around for pictures of real siphon wagons, I became more doubtful, since every single colour picture that I could find showed the lettering on siphons in yellow rather than white. Certainly, the GWR used white lettering on many of its wagons, but for some reason yellow always seems to have been used on siphons. I had seen pictures of yellow lettering before applying my decals, but I only had white decals on hand in the correct size. Another thing that struck me as I looked for pictures of siphon wagons was that it was absolutely impossible to find any picture of a real siphon H. I could find plenty of pictures of models, but the vast majority of pictures of real siphons showed the siphon G type and the rest showed earlier four- and six-wheel siphon wagons with one or two pictures of the later refrigerated J-type. Not a single real H. The type was certainly designed, and a diagram, i.e. a formal specification, existed, but I have to wonder if they were ever really used much, given the fact that I couldn't find a single picture anywhere, online or in any of my books. Anyway, back to the modelling. I decided I'd better convert the lettering to yellow. I experimented first with using a fine tip highlighter, but the result seemed too bright. So I went with carefully painting over the white decals using a fine tip brush and polyscale CP yellow acrylic paint. This was of course fiddly, but it seemed possible to produce a somewhat serviceable result. The resulting colour was perhaps not exactly ideal, but I think it was a definite improvement from the white. And, of course, minor imperfections of the lettering um, uh, are not going to be very noticeable when the wagons are viewed on the layout. So, all in all, I think it was worth the effort. I'm happier seeing the wagons now looking like a proper GWR train as they wend their way around the layout. So now let's see some running video of the Daypole Siphons at the end of all this. So here they come after all this mucking around. And even in the dark, yes, you can see the GW1 and So after all this. Finally, they actually look something like Great Western Wagons, although, as I say, uh, the front one's a Siphon G, which uh, you know, has the uh, corridor connectors, the, net, the other two are Siphon H's, and I uh, couldn't find any trace anywhere of actual Siphon H's. Uh, plenty of models of Siphon H's around, but I couldn't find a single picture anywhere. I have quite a number of books, and I looked online, I couldn't find a single picture. If anyone is aware of actual pictures of real Siphon H's in service, I'd be interested to see them. Um, and then the Siphon J was the final type, pretty much, which was refrigerated. But, uh, 
Anyway, what we got here is one siphon G, which was the most common type, and two siphon H's. I've also actually got another siphon G that I built from a Cavendish kit, uh, which was uh, which appeared in earlier videos. Little GWR Panier tank, which is quite an appropriate uh, engine to be pulling uh, these, although sometimes, of course, larger engines were used to pull the milk trains. Uh, and a, a GWR towed brake van on the back. I pass the tide them off after their engine to airstrip. And through Uppingham Station. Really, the Midlands is more my major focus, but uh, I can do both passenger and freight services for all of the big four now. And the camera, unfortunately, auto-focuses and has a mind of its own as to what it wants to focus on. So there they go, my my Great Western Milk Train. I suppose I could make it, I could add the Cavendish... Uh, siphon and make it a four siphon milk train uh, there it goes for its last uh, time round